Hello goat lovers, this is Crystal with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats. What started with four chickens and two goats quickly grew into a lifestyle. So we moved, got more land, and of course, more goats. Follow our adventures as we grow our herd, our food, and our family. Hi guys, welcome back to Arizona. Where it doesn't rain ever, even in the rainy season. So here where we're located in southern Arizona, we typically get 14 inches of annual rainfall. And in Tucson, which is to the west of us, they get 13 inches of rainfall. And if that sounds horrible, you'd be correct. But that's what makes this place a desert. And uh, up there in Phoenix, where Denell and Weedham and Reap is located, they only get nine inches of annual rainfall. So 14 inches sounds really good compared to that. But all that being said, we've only had a half inch of rain since March. Um, it sprinkled here at our house the second week in April, sprinkled. And, uh, and then in the second week of May, it sprinkled again. And then the second week of June, it sprinkled. And we're talking not even measurable rainfall. And so far during our rainy season, we have gotten a quarter inch of rain one time and a tenth inch of rain twice. So a half inch of rain since March. By now, our, uh, our pastures, our fields, our grass should be two feet tall and green. It should look like it does in your neck of the woods. Instead, it's dead brown. And, you know, I'd be lying if I said we, we're not getting a little bit concerned. We need these fields to grow back so our goats and our animals will have fresh browse and stuff all the way to the next year when our rainy season comes again. So it's a little, little concerning right now. So we think we figured out what's going on with the garden. Um, so most of our soil is just compost and it really compacts after a while. So if you see these onions here, it's, they're not staying underneath. They're actually getting pushed out. Um, so we, like this, I mean, they're not even in there. So look at that. That's obviously not good. So I mentioned to Derek that we should amend the soil with some wood chips and told him to go maybe purchase some wood chips. So when you tell a man like Derek to go buy wood chips, what does he do? He buys a wood chipper. So I figured buying a wood chipper would be a better investment. Uh, many of you know that we are beefing up the fence on the, the back 40 side of our property. And uh, so I'm, I'm trimming tree branches out of our trees to make fence stays. Now with that comes a bunch of brush and I could pile all that brush and burn it, you know, here in the drought ridden desert of Arizona, or I could turn that brush into wood chips and amend the soil in our garden. So I bought a wood chipper. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there is a fence stay right hiding in this branch here. And uh, I'll show you how we trim that out. It's kind of my favorite tool for this stuff is just a sawzall. So I don't know if you can see that, but right there is the post. So there's my fence post and I'll, I'll end up trimming the top to height when it's in place on the fence. So then we're left with all this brush. So as far as wood chippers go, your small entry level gas powered ones, I mean you're looking somewhere between $600 and $1,000 to get started and I didn't want to spend that much money. I was looking to spend something comparable to $100 or $200 in wood chips because that's what the wife wanted, a couple hundred dollars in wood chips. So I got this electric one. I got it off of Amazon. It got here pretty quick. And so far it's worked pretty good. Um, it feels safer using if you're, you know, if you 
if you've never used a wood chipper before, you know, uh, the big ones can be dangerous, but with this one, you know, they're, you, you feel pretty safe using it. It is electric, like I said, so you do need a big heavy duty extension cord, but I already have that. And uh, it does up to an inch and three quarter thick branches, and it does do it. Um, so here, we'll show you how it works. Like magic it makes the brush pile disappear it comes with this bag on the bottom and you stick the branches in it chews them up and spits it out wood chips and as you can see I've already got a whole wheelbarrow full and a whole trash can full so I don't know how I'm gonna save the stuff that's already planted with these but as things get harvested I will start tilling in wood chips so this kind of a long-term solution but uh an affordable one so if you have branches laying around and trees to trim and projects which I'm sure most of you do I'll leave a link for this affordable wood chipper in the description below it was only a I think it was 155 bucks with prime or whatever so that's affordable and it, and it, and it works so we'll leave a link all right so like I do I'm gonna go in and check on the boys and see how their banding is going and maybe do some blue coating <coughs> You be lucky boy number one. I got sap on ya. Look out, legend. Yep, he's got a little separating. See pink there? I'm gonna go ahead and give him a spray. So if you guys didn't see, we use blue coat, works really well. And wear gloves, because this stuff stinks everything. Come here, mister. Let's do that one more time. Good boy. Hold on, hold on. Okay, come here. You gotta calm down. Thank you. Just like that. Sorry, buddy. Oh. <laughs> well, you want checked. Let's see. Oh yeah, he needs a bad. There we go. Alright, so all six of them needed to be sprayed with blue coat. So it's been exactly a month since we've banded them. Um, next two to four weeks, we should start finding little ball sacks around the ground. Look at this big old pig. Yep. It's such a big one. This pig is so bad. What are you doing, Teddy? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> he just dropped over. Will you do that again? That was funny. These pigs are so stinking cute. A lot of people ask, and I always forget to mention, but they're Cooney Cooney pigs. They're just a very, very neat breed. I love them. I really cannot believe how much bigger this girl is. She was like the same size as Teddy and Dobby when we got her. She's, she's an eater. It's kind of a mini water buffalo. You're funny. What are you doing over here by yourself, Miss Peggy Hill? Huh? Ruff, ruff. Yeah. Just chilling. They really like it right here by this tree for their little naps. What are you doing, sweet girl? They're so talkative, too. 
Ouch, this guy just bit me. Dobby, he's a biter. He nibbles. Yeah, it was a nibble. But it, it was a taste. <laughs> huh. Cuties. Come here, Ledge. Come here. No, you're gonna run from the piggy? So Ledge doesn't run from me anymore. He's my buddy again. And Vader usually is always running up to me, but he's busy. Uh, so these boys I'm actually super excited about. Vader back here. Check him out. They are growing so nicely and beefing up. I mean, they're still little guys, but they're going to be just perfectly fine to breed here in a couple months. They'll be able to get the job done and no worries. And Legend is a big boy. He was the last one born here this year and outgrowing some of the others, so... <laughs> And he's such a character. He is going to be like Lucky. Aren't you? It's going to be interesting when we put those boys together. There's my boy. How you doing? I love you guys. Precious. And Vader's just my sweet boy. Aren't you? You're just so sweet. Very excited about these two. You're so pretty, both of you. So these dolings here have a surprise coming for them. They're getting their very own solar panel and it should be here within the week. And then they're gonna get trained to the fence and they're gonna get to browse because they gotta get out of this kid, kid pen. So these trees and this area has time to recover for the little babies next season. So these five will be staying together until we breed in October and Dreamer and Maybelline will be going into a breeding stall and potentially Vogue, but they'll get to just browse together for the next couple of months. So I'm excited about that and they will love it. And then Lacey, old grandma Lacey will get to go join them in a couple months when she's not going to be getting bred. So it'll work out nice. Yes, yes. So pretty, so pretty. Hi, hi, hi. Just little love bugs. <laughs> Come to me, jungle friends. We were coming up there to say hi. You can go back up. Come on. The herd of does have been rowdy, rowdy, rowdy this week. They have just been at each other big time. Um, and oddly enough, Lodi is just not not fighting anybody. I don't know why everybody else is fighting and Lodi's playing nice this week. So the hierarchy is definitely, definitely changing. Um, about five, six days ago, they were all after May and May was one of the one of the queens, um, but they all kind of took around and and now she sits back and it actually kind of breaks my heart because May's my girl. Um, but anyway, I don't get to choose who's in charge in the herd. So yeah, now May kind of stands back from the food, just kind of like big Montana, like Sky. So things are changing. So even Cassie here wanted to fight May for quite a while. The only one that didn't fight May was her daughter, Maddie. She did try to help her a little bit, but not for very long. But Nova is kind of taking her rounds as well. She's been all week. She's been choosing a goat and fighting with him, so she is not no punk. It's kind of funny. The other one's kind of... The other crazies, there's there's four of them that kind of don't really want any, any trouble out of anybody and are kind of scared, Becky and Val especially, just a really timid little thing and don't, you know, doesn't want to fight with anybody. So, Nova, 
she wants to be in charge or at least have some rank. She doesn't want to be on the bottom in this herd for sure. Roxy is also one who, you know, she doesn't want to be on the bottom of the herd either. And she's going to, she's been fighting. Little Bit and Shilly, the girls we had before, Little Bit and Shilly, man, they are really being rough. <laughs> so they're, they're taking their rounds and just bullying everybody. So it's just kind of been crazy, really, to watch them all fight each other. Um, there's two factors in that. Of course, the bucks are getting in rut, and these girls' heats are getting harder, too. Um, so that's going to play a factor. They do get a little more rowdy once it's breeding season. And then all of the different does, you know, and then, of course, the, the crazies are feeling a little more confident and a little more comfortable with themselves and wanting to step up the ranks. So in the evenings, we separate the six milkers, Elsa being one of them, who is a ringleader. She's a bully in the herd. Um, so everybody doesn't have to fight for her. Everybody in the other pen, of course, they get to battle it out and see who's in charge when Elsa's not there. And as far as May's concerned, you know, we take Maddie's another milker. So we kind of take her, her buddy out, her, her friend, her buddy, her help. So there's just a lot of things going on in the herd right now. It's a lot of girls and they're cranky. So they just been fighting. But they look happy right now. So it's 100 today, which is better than 110 because that's what it's been for a few days this week. Uh, so anyway, I'm sweaty, I'm hot, I got some stuff to do in the house, so I'm going to go in and get cleaned up. guys and I did a thing so I made some more soap and I'm gonna cut it with you guys check it out it looks like it stayed really white on the top so we'll see how the inside looks Actually, this is a week old. I did this a week ago. So let's see. Not bad. Kind of cool. My most excited about is that look at how white it stayed throughout. It's nice. So this soap, I tweaked a little bit from the last one that I actually made. Um, tweaked the oils a little, rather. And I really like the way it turned out. So as far as it didn't come to trace super, super quick. And I did a little things different as well to make sure it didn't come to trace so quickly. But I think I'm really going to like this soap.
I'm surprised. I was hoping I didn't wait too long because I wanted to cut it with you guys, but yeah, I definitely could have waited just a bit longer. But that's pretty. I like it. I'm pretty happy with this soap here, guys. Um, actually, when I was fiddling around with the different oils and stuff, I'm thinking this is going to be the one. So I can't wait to try it, but of course it's going to be a few weeks. But I think this is going to be the one. Just want to say thank you to Tyann for sending us these awesome cactus flower molds. Those should be fun. Thanks. Alright, so as much fun as soap is, and I would love to make another batch right now, I have to get on dinner. So tonight I'm just going to do a simple, nice meal. Um, got some chicken breast here, lemon pepper chicken breast. Which, if all goes well, here soon, this might be the last chicken, or meat for that matter, that we have to buy from the store in a long time. Fingers crossed. And then of course, fresh farm eggs. And I also, from the garden, made a bunch of potatoes. Um, we got gold, red, and purple. And there's a bunch of squash in there, all squashed out. But we'll have that on the site as well. So that's leftovers from last night. And then, uh, while I was in the shower, I made Derek go to the store for us, which is our grocery store outside, and get me some produce. So I'll show you guys what we're doing with that tonight. All right, so we're, we're getting quite a bit of stuff out of the garden now. There's a lot of stuff taken off, which is exciting. I don't know if you guys saw the last video, or last week, we were just getting a couple a day, and now we're getting, we're getting quite a bit more tomatoes. This is a couple days worth, not just one day, but either way, we're getting more tomatoes now, finally, which makes me excited because I love, love, love tomatoes. We got... Quite a bit of squashes growing, um, and I like to pick them small like this. This is zucchini, obviously, but I like to pick them a little bit smaller. The smaller ones I put on my salad. They're really, really good and tender when they're small, and then the larger ones, of course, we bake with. So it's nice to have some of that going. And our radishes are doing really good this go around, so we're getting quite a bit of those. And we're using up the white onions currently because they are in the full sun or they're in a part of the garden that they're just kind of getting beat up. That sun is, it's brutal. So we're eating the white onions that we got first and the rest of them are doing really good on the other end of the garden, like the red and the, and the gold. So lettuce, you guys. I've been waiting all week because I've been just watching it grow. So this lettuce here, it's a mixture. We got some arugula. We even have a little bit of kale kicking out there. Um, black seed. Black Simpson seed, I believe it's called. And then some red leaf. But it's probably been a couple months since we've had a salad from the garden. And that's like one of my favorite things, of course. So... Doing pretty good on produce. Feeling, feeling pretty good about that. It's nice to be able to not need this stuff from, from the grocery store. Alright guys, it's been a fun day. I'm going to continue preparing our dinner and we will see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.